to, that I explain lattice energy and how to use the Born-Haver cycle to calculate the lattice energy using known enthalpies of certain reactions. So, all right, first of all, what is lattice energy? Well, the lattice energy is just the energy that is released when you combine the ions in the gaseous form to form a solid ionic compound. So we know that this solid ionic compound is more stable than these gaseous ions, so we know that energy is going to be released. If we want to break apart this ionic compound, then we're going to have to give it a lot of energy, then the delta H would be positive. So the opposite reaction would just be a positive 787. And that works for all of the delta H. Delta H is just the change in enthalpy, which is the change in thermal energy associated with the reaction. All right, so how does the size of the cations and anions affect the lattice energy? Well, smaller cations and anions are going to be held more strongly. They're going to be more stable. So the lattice energies of lithium, lattice energy of lithium fluoride is going to have a lot larger numeric value than say the lattice energy of like rubidium and iodine coming together 600 negative 630 kilojoules per mole. But as you have a smaller ion, what happens is they can hold on tighter. So those two cation is attracted to the anion in a much stronger bond. So to form lithium fluoride from the gaseous lithium ion and fluorine anion, it's going to release a whole lot of energy because, again, that lithium fluoride ionic compound where it's no longer in the gas form, it's in this compound form, it's going to be much again more stable and it releases energy. Remember it you take energy to break a bond and release energy to form the bond. So that's why lattice energies are negative because again we defined lattice energy as going from the gas ions to the solid ionic compound and we know that going from the ions to the solid it's going to release energy. Well, the size of the ions affects the lattice energy, but the charge also affects the lattice energy. If you have more charge, like aluminum 3 plus, you have a stronger positive charge, it's going to hold on to the negative anions a lot tighter, so the lattice energy is going to be a lot larger numerically for ions with a higher charge. So the increased charge increases the strength of the bond. So when you form an ionic compound that has a valence of like plus three or plus two, then the uh, formed compound is going to be much, much more stable and it will be very exothermic to form from those gaseous ions. So the lattice energy is going to be a very large negative number. So this is what I mean by that large negative delta H. If you go from the high energy cation and anion down to the lower energy lithium fluoride solid, that means it's compacted down into that solid crystal lattice. Now we've released energy and that delta H, that lattice energy from that release is that's just called the lattice energy, and it will be a negative delta H. And again, the formation of these ionic solids is exothermic. And All right, so sometimes it's not so easy to just directly calculate the lattice energy, taking the gaseous ions to form that solid. So what we do is indirectly calculate it using the Born-Haber cycle. And to use the Born-Haber cycle, you have to understand a few terms. You have to understand the enthalpy of sublimation, what that means. Well, that's going from a solid ionic crystal or just a solid, whatever your substance is, to the gas. And the delta H is going to be positive because you're going to have to put in energy to break those bonds. So 
sodium metal, sodium solid, going to sodium gas has a delta H of 107 kilojoules per mole. These can be found in tables. P chemists love this. They do this all day. They figure out the enthalpies of sublimation. They figure out bond association energy. So that's the second thing we need to know. Bond association energy is just the energy required to break a bond. That's So you've got this XX. The X just means any halogen. And um, or really it could be any compound and if you want to actually break it down the middle that's called a homolytic cleavage where you've actually broken it down the middle of that bond to form just the atoms on their own so you're breaking the, molecule, the, the molecular bond to form the individual atoms and again you're breaking a bond so the delta H is going to be positive and an example would take, be taking chlorine gas and forming just Cl gas. Well, we know that would be just a Cl radical, so it would be Cl2. So let's draw the Lewis structure for Cl2. And if we break this bond homolytically, we're going to get a Cl radical and then another Cl radical, and that's just symbolized by saying two Cl gases. And the delta H or the bond association energy for that reaction is positive 243 kilojoules per mole. It's going to take energy to break that bond and that's the bond dissociation energy. So we've said, alright, and well, all this is going to figure out how to figure out the lattice energy of a, com of a compound is first we have to know the enthalpy of sublimation, we can get the solid to a gas. The bond dissociation energy is just going from the molecular form of an of a um, element to the atomic form. So Cl2, remember that's a diatomic element going to chlorine atoms. Then the third thing you need to know is the ionization energy. You've probably heard this before. It's the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in its gaseous state. So if you've got sodium gas and we want to figure out how much energy it requires to remove one electron it's actually a delta H. It takes energy because you're going to actually have to remove it. It's going to be positive 496. That's not a very high ionization energy. Uh, sodium it's willing to give up that electron because remember it's going to then become isoelectronic to one of the noble gases and that's stable so that's a pretty low ionization energy. Remember the ionization energies increase as you go up and over on the periodic table. So even a larger alkali metal would have even a lower ionization energy. So again, review your notes over that. You should have already had this. Um, but that's ionization energy, just the energy required to remove the electron. This one only has, it's just going to form the mono, you know, in a plus because it's in group 1A, so it only has one electron to remove to, to become pretty stable. But if you had something like an alkali earth metal, you're going to have a first ionization energy and then a second ionization energy. And that second one's going to be a lot harder to pull off than the first uh, electron. And those electrons that you're removing are the one in that outermost shell, the one that's going to be the easiest to pull off. So the ionization energy, this is the first ionization energy, re energy required to remove the outermost electron from an atom in its gaseous state. Alright, and then now the fourth, the fourth type of enthalpy that we need to know or change is the ion, ah, sorry, excuse me, the E. I or the electron affinity. And electron affinity is just the energy change that accompanies a reaction when you add an electron to an atom in its gaseous state. So the electron affinity of chlorine atoms, well, that's actually going to form a more stable substance. Cl minus is much happier than this Cl gas.